The Agile methodology was developed out of a need to address common inefficiencies of more traditional project management approaches like the waterfall method in the software development industry. But some types of projects might actually be burdened by Agile techniques. There's no rule that says you can only pick one and stick with it. So let's break down the basic differences between Agile and waterfall processes and walk through how to combine the best of both methods using a Gantt chart. Agile project management focuses on iterations in which planning, design, implementation, and testing occur in short periods of time. Because planning happens throughout the Agile project lifecycle, decisions can be more reactive. In software development projects, bugs can be caught early and fixed before they grow to become bigger problems. The premise of this approach is to continuously plan around the inevitable change requests as the product evolves. It's not hard to see how Agile and Waterfall processes differ from each other. Here's the Waterfall process for a generic project, and here's the Agile process for a generic project. It turns out, Gantt charts are still beneficial for things like meeting deadlines, managing workloads, and providing project status reports to clients and stakeholders, especially if your organization isn't 100% agile. These are some of the drawbacks of agile that you and your team may encounter when using a hybrid approach in a traditional organization. In Agile, a product owner is typically your only stakeholder, and they're heavily involved in every decision made along the way as your product evolves. Unless you're working on an internal team whose single focus is developing a product, chances are you're applying Agile principles to a project that still has to operate within a traditional organization. Expect multiple stakeholders, like executive leadership, department managers, and subject matter experts, to muddy up the process. In Agile, teams write user stories, not requirements. The user story format helps the team uncover requirements which evolve and emerge as the project progresses. This may mean the final end product differs from the original vision, though stakeholders should be a part of the decision-making process along the way. Setting clear process and role expectations should reel in any uneasy feelings. Agile works in iterations to continually improve a product. While this can be good for business, it can become frustrating for stakeholders who expect a hard deadline. Without a clearly defined scope, stakeholders may complain that it seems like the project will never end. Often, these very same people also request changes or want to add features to the product. Dates are fluid with Agile, and it can be hard to communicate timing to stakeholders you're more likely to encounter stakeholders who need to see a set of milestone dates than ones who can deal without them. People love dates and timing estimates. Agile's great for blue sky ideas you build together, but if you work in an organization where leadership wants specifics about what they'll get when or where things are in the process, Agile alone won't deliver. You need a detailed plan that shows them how you'll get to that date. Gantt charts enable you to add structured timelines to sprint cycles so you can easily update stakeholders on the status of a project. For all the things we just listed to not become a problem, everyone has to be involved from day one. While that isn't an issue for a project team that's assigned to a single project, it usually doesn't work out like that for external stakeholders. Often, they're too busy or don't have the expertise. They simply want the bottom line. Is the project on track? Gantt charts can communicate that in seconds. As project managers, it's our job to steer the project from inception through completion. We make decisions that affect the finished product every day. Selecting the right approach for your projects is no different. Don't get stuck thinking you have to use one project management method or another. You should rarely approach two projects the same way, but you should begin with the same step. Take all the background information available on the project and study it. From this information, determine which components from both methodologies would work best. This can be based on the attitudes of stakeholders, critical dates that must be met, technical complexity, and team composition. The most common challenge is stakeholders' focus on timing. Even if a project lends itself to naturally assume more agile-based techniques, not having milestone dates worries many stakeholders. An Agile Gantt chart is a project planning tool that applies a waterfall model to an Agile project by mapping sprint tasks and dependencies out on a visual timeline. 
Using a Gantt chart for an Agile project makes it easy to track progress, manage workloads, and keep stakeholders up to date on the work. Once you've decided which Agile techniques to use in your day-to-day -day project management, here are the steps to set up a basic Agile project with a Gantt chart timeline. Under each anticipated iteration, create one task item per feature. The key deviation from a typical Gantt chart for a waterfall-based project is that this chart relies heavily on dependencies. For instance, your QA team can't test new features and functionality if you don't set up a staging environment first. So add a finish to start dependency to connect those two tasks on your Agile Gantt chart. Throughout the iteration, hold daily standups as well as planning and review meetings. From these meetings, you can determine which features to move to later iterations. When these items are moved around in the Gantt chart, the dates move automatically too. In this Gantt chart example, the highlighted item is a task that needs to be moved to a later sprint. Here, you can see that the task has been moved down and the dependencies rearranged. From your daily standups, you may determine that two resources can work on their assigned tasks simultaneously, but some of the other tasks that are also assigned will have to move back to accommodate this new addition. So now, the Gantt chart for Agile Sprint looks something like this. If your team doesn't want to work in a Gantt chart, Team Gantt gives you the option to view and manage tasks in a Kanban board without having to juggle multiple tools to tackle the project. In board view, cards are tied directly to tasks on your Gantt chart. Team members can update and move cards across columns on your board as work progresses. And you can rest easier knowing your Agile timeline always reflects the current status of the project. Here's what it would look like if we track our sprint tasks in board view based on the Agile Gantt chart example we talked about a minute ago. You can customize your project board columns to fit your team or organization's process, or even create your own custom board which allows you to manage tasks across multiple projects. Now that you've seen an example of how to use Gantt charts to manage your Agile projects, let's talk about the advantages. First up, clients and stakeholders. Clients and stakeholders really need the comfort of a plan. Here are some benefits of using Gantt charts with clients. While this setup won't produce the pretty progress charts Scrum Masters are used to seeing, you do have a schedule with concrete dates that help stakeholders visualize the time and effort each feature requires. You can share this with your project team, internal stakeholders, and clients. When updated every day following a Scrum, it shows project progress in an intuitive way. Clients know when to expect components of the project to be completed, and they know when they'll be expected to conduct their testing. There's a clear roadmap of how we would reach the final product. Team members will also benefit from using Gantt charts to manage your Agile projects. Here are just a few advantages your project team might see. They can see not only what's expected of them in the upcoming iteration, but also an outline of later iterations. Certain tasks or features may be moved down to later sprints or iterations, but the Agile Gantt format can also shed light on dependencies. They can plan for themselves and advise you on how they'd like to approach implementation. Testers can rest easy knowing a ballpark time frame of when they'll be needed. They can see from the chart when they're expected to test and what not to report bugs on. No two projects are the same, and this hybrid approach allows you to customize how you run every project. You can select techniques that are efficient and balance your team's preferences with your client's tendency to prioritize dates. Use this Gantt backlog combination to drive conversations with stakeholders on how their requested changes can affect the overall timing. It also provides a handy tool you can use to educate less savvy clients on design and development processes. That's it for this video on using Gantt charts in your Agile projects. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, I'd love it if you could return the favor and hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.